Okay, so we used to think AGI was years away. I mean, we'd even be luck lucky, I guess. Lucky? Lucky and also kind of nerve-wracking to see it in our lifetime. But then recently we started seeing tech founders, I mean, for example, NVIDIA's CEO, starting to say that AGI was around five years away. So naturally, I decided to sit down with Sadie, who is a founder in the AI and data space. I mean, she has been working in this space since 2014. She has years of experience and was in this space before, honestly, it really took off over the past few years. So I wanted to sit down with her, understand her thoughts around that, but also so much more. I mean, let's dive into the ethics around AI. Should you, if you're looking to get into this space, become a generalist or specialist and so much more. All right, but first, let me share with you a bit more about Sadie. So Sadie is the founder of an international nonprofit organization called Women in Data. And she's currently in the process of building an institute called the Human Machine Collaboration, where they are working on bridging the gap between humans to be able to easily or more easily work with technology. I mean, tech is moving so quickly, we need a way for us as humans to be able to work alongside it. So I sat down with her to really cover everything around AI, ask all the big questions I had. The first one started around ethics. I mean, it's a hot topic within artificial intelligence. Who and how are we going to regulate AI, especially at the speed it's going? I wanted to learn from her what were some of the biggest improvements that we have seen with ethics and regulations, where we see it going, and all of that. And one of the biggest takeaways I got from listening to her on this is that one of the biggest improvements in this area is around information. Listen to this. Just to see the improvements on misinformation that we've seen in upgrades in common models like chat GPT and GPT 3.5 to version 4, let alone from Claude's first model to Claude 3. So I don't know if for those early adopters, if you use like GPT 3.5, you notice that it hallucinated quite frequently. And while it was useful, it could really deceive a lot of people with misinformation. Okay, I couldn't agree with her more. Also, I wanna share with you a clip of an example she gave around AI and the challenges with sharing about history. So in this example, she goes on to share around how when a user prompts AI such as ChatGPT or Claude to learn more about history, here are some of the challenges a lot of these companies had initially faced. You can tell by the news cycles that it's really hard to align it with human values from what we saw with Google Gemini, where they were doing the right thing and trying to overcome bias with how people were described in images. Some people felt like it went a little too far, right? When you were looking at historical figures um, from World War II not being represented with how they actually were. And so while we've made progress in hallucinations, we still have a lot of progress to make in terms of that alignment space of what needs to be true historically, but also where do we reduce biases and project those moving forward? And how do we align those to individual human values as well? I mean, you can tell even by listening to Sadie, she has been in the AI space for a long time. As I mentioned earlier in this video, for since 2014, she's been in this space. And I think it's so fascinating to learn from experts within this field who have really seen the, the change from starting when it, AI, artificial intelligence, wasn't as widely known, I would say, or as commonly spoken about to what it is today, to where it is now. And here's what she had to say so in awe that we're even where we are here today. Uh, I know almost five years ago, I built my first chatbot and it was, you know, still had to be very almost even manually programmed and just wasn't very fun to talk to, right? Now working with tools like Claude or ChatGPT, people get actual like delight from talking to these, which I think is so surprising. And so, you know, what was the big change in all of that was the introduction of the transformer. And most importantly, if you want to dive into the details, you can read it in a paper called Attention is All You Need. It's a great paper. I love that example she gave around chatbots as well, back, building them back in the day to now where they are today. Individuals and thinking about like, should I go into more of a specialized AI or like, a, should I start focusing on AGI research? Again, this really comes down to your preference and what interests you. Again, when there's so much opportunity in the AI space, I would just say dive in. For me, like, one of the areas that I'm really interested in is how do we help humans use these tools and adapt to these tools from a like psychological perspective? 
but there's a ton of opportunity. Let's say you're a UX designer and jumping into AI could be a great place to be because it would allow you to look and design like how do we have the system interfaces to talk to an AI agent? Is chat really the best? Do we do we speak to it? Are there other ways that would be better to interact? What happens when we change those features? So that's just one very small example of like, there's so much opportunity for people in this space. I try and think of it less of like AI as a subset of technology, but more as like, this is a technology that's going to change all of humanity. What role do you want to play in it? Because there's space for you in this space. I love that she shared so many different examples as to how we can get into AI. There are there is so much space for everyone. You don't have to have a particular background. It's Artificial intelligence feels like how tech as a whole, the industry felt a few years ago, where even if you don't have a particular background, there's still a space for you there because it's touching every industry, which is pretty exciting. Okay, this is probably my favorite part of the conversation with Sadie, which was around the future of work. And then of course, covering AGI. I really wanted to know someone like her's take on it, who is such an expert in the field. And here's what she had to say. This is one of my favorite subjects. I'm currently writing a book about AI for knowledge workers. So my description for a knowledge worker is if you work at a desk, then you're a knowledge worker, right? If you use a computer, you're most likely a knowledge worker. And so I think first starting off, AI is going to have a massive effect on knowledge worker just because so much of the work that we do is already through a digital space. And so if you're working in a digital space, AI can come alongside and make you what I think of as either more productive or more creative, which is something I think all of us as humans are trying to do. But AI will not just affect knowledge worker, it will also affect you know, some of your more blue collar jobs. Right now where I think we're headed within AI is we're building essentially the brain, right? Which I mean, that's intelligence or where intelligence is hosted. But we also have alongside of us robotics and so they're building the body. And soon we're gonna combine this brain and this body together to have a really intelligent machine. And that's when it will start to affect more of the blue collar manual labor type of jobs as well. Right now we're seeing it heavily affect um, knowledge workers, but I think it will soon be for kind of all of us in, in terms of how we work. And so how we've scoped this out at the Institute is from now until the next five years, we really have to train humans how to work alongside AI, right? How do you use it for your productivity, for your creativity? How do you change kind of your common ways of working? and your work streams to integrate it into those so that you can be more productive and creative. Okay, I'm on vacation, but I realized I didn't include this next part or intro this next part. So here are Sadie's thoughts around AGI. And I think this was so interesting. We hear people's thoughts around AGI from you know either tech leaders who might be trying to get some buzz behind them and then also to uh, different people who are trying to get a reaction. So to hear it from an actual expert who has been in this industry since 2014 was pretty incredible what she had to say. Okay, now I need more coffee. Watch this. Even three years ago, the thoughts of AGI were like 20, 30 years out for people in the space. And you can read reports now in terms of like polling industry experts and how fast they think AGI is coming. And now it's cut down all the way to like, you know, five to 10 years, which is quite incredible, right? So most of us thought that like AGI was like, yes, cool. Hopefully we'll get there. Hopefully I'll see it in my lifetime. But if it doesn't happen, I wouldn't be surprised to like, oh, we're definitely going to see it in our lifetime and we need to be prepared for it, right? All right, we covered a lot in this video. I am so grateful Sadie sat down with me to really uncover where artificial not only is at today, the opportunities within it, but also to where we are headed and how we can better prepare ourselves for that. With the first step being knowing where we are headed. And that's what I hope this video gave to you today. Thank you all for watching. I linked down below Sadie's accounts. So make sure to go check her out if you haven't already. She has incredible content and shares so much wisdom and knowledge with us. So thank you, Sadie, for being part of this video. If you like this style of video where I interview individuals and experts in their fields, let me know in the comments and I will continue to do it. Thanks all.